Vsauce, Kevin here with a message about your online existence. Social media is a venomous snake pit of linguistic diarrhea and keyboard garbage because no one can agree on what knowledge is actually knowledge. No matter what the post or video or tweet or argument is about, no matter what side they're on, no matter what they believe, someone else knows they're wrong. They don't know anything. How can two people be both so confident that they know something when they've reached totally different conclusions? Obviously, both can't be right, right? What's weird is that it seems pretty simple to know something. I mean, you just know it. You know it because you have some kind of relevant experience, or you know someone who does and they transferred that knowledge to you. Or maybe you've read something you trust, or you know that what an expert in a particular field says is valid. However it comes to you, that information is an accurate description of the way the world is. That's knowledge, right? Sometimes. The way we tend to think about knowledge is in terms of justified true belief, a concept that goes back to Plato's dialogue between Socrates and Theotetus in 369 BC, and was actually refined and codified by 20th century philosophers. It's a little more modern than it seems, but it's exactly what it sounds like. To know something, you need to have justification for it. What sort of evidence tells you it's right? Is there enough of it? Are the odds in its favor? And it needs to be true. Is it reality for you and for others? Does it really hold up to scrutiny? Truth is pretty weird in that it's metaphysical. It's about how things are, not necessarily what you see. We don't even have to verify something for it to be true. Quick, pick heads or tails. Go. I'm never ever going to look at the result of this coin flip, but half of you predicted the true outcome. Hoop. And then you've got to believe it and you have to recognize it as being true and justified. Look, here's a very simple example. You look at a clock to find out the time because clocks tell time. You're justified in thinking a clock is going to tell you the time. The clock says 3 p.m., which you believe because it's always been right before and this is what clocks do. It's true because it's actually 3 p.m. So congratulations, you know it's 3 p.m. All of this makes sense. What I've just described is a formal examination of what we all do pretty much all the time. But I can prove your justified true belief, your knowledge can be an illusion. For thousands of years, understanding of what knowledge is was considered etched in stone, case closed, until in 1963, philosopher Edmund Gettier wrote a short three-page paper that completely smashed the justified true belief simulation. It was such a shift in how we think about knowledge that philosopher Alvin Plantinga said in 1993 that knowledge is justified true belief. So we thought from time immemorial. Then God said, let Gettier be. Not quite all was light, perhaps, but at any rate, we learned we had been standing in a dark corner. How? Gettier claimed that we can satisfy all three of those conditions and still not actually know something. Let's revisit our clock example. We looked at a clock that read 3 p.m. and had knowledge it was 3 p.m. because it satisfied Plato's justified true belief definition. What if the clock was broken and stuck at 3 p.m.? Do you actually know the time from looking at a broken clock, even if it's accidentally correct? No. 
Like N-O, no, not K-N-O, W, no. No, that is justified true belief without knowledge. That is a Gettier problem. Or think of it like this. There is a cat in this YouTube video. Howdy, Sheriff Cat here. I just moseyed on into this two-bit town to restore a bit of order. You see, this here wobbling jawed tenderfoot's been yarning the hours away with too much mustard, and I aim to set things straight before the whole corral turns into a bag of nails. I haven't been outside in four months. Anyway, there's a cat in this YouTube video. You know there's a YouTube video because you're watching me record it. You're on YouTube right now. You're looking at Sheriff Cat. You're justified in thinking there's a cat in this video. You can decide it's true with confidence and you believe what you're seeing. Everything here adds up. And you were right, there has been a cat in this video this whole time. You were just right for the wrong reasons. And yeah, you were right, but did you know it? Is that knowledge? Is that knowledge, Luna? You'll figure it out. You'll figure out what knowledge is. No, of course it's not knowledge. You knew nothing. You had a justified true belief. It was accurate, but it wasn't. So even when you're right, how do you know you're not actually wrong? This calls into question the scientific method, what we think we know about the natural world, everything. Given the ease and prevalence of Gettier problems, we can't possibly know anything, right? Hello? Wrong. <laughs> well, mostly wrong. This is how it actually works, okay? As scientists, we have a hypothesis. We wonder if something is true or not true. We propose an experiment. If the experiment supports the hypothesis, then we say, well, maybe my idea was true, but I could be biased. Maybe there was a flaw in my experiment. Maybe the electrical current had a glitch in the midpoint of taking data. Yeah, yeah, but that's exactly the kind of uncertainty I'm talking about. I do the experiment again. I try to design a different kind of experiment to test for the same idea. I get a colleague of mine to test it. I get them to come up with a new kind of experiment. I get a competitor of mine to, to, to try to show that I'm wrong with an experimental design of their own. And if all those experiments give approximately the same answer, because there will be statistical variation, if it gives approximately the same answer, we're on to something. Okay, 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 so in science, you take what seems to be knowledge and then start to eliminate all those other possibilities to distill what you think you know. But new truth is emerging in the methods and tools of science as they are applied to that question, all right? So we learn Earth goes around the sun. That's not gonna later on be shown to be false, ever, ever. We got that one. Now you can ask more refined questions. Okay, what kind of orbit does it have? Is it a perfect circle? It's a good approximation, but it's not exactly right. So you can ask deeper questions. Yes, it does go around the sun. What kind of a circle is it? Is it a squash circle? Is it elongated? Is it, it, and you keep doing this. And what you end up doing is refining the answer to the question to a level that satisfies your needs in the moment. Yeah, so that's how knowledge builds and expands. So maybe it's not so much what we don't know as what we keep finding out. So you can say, will we ever know anything? Yes, we know a lot of things. Will we ever know anything perfectly? Well, there are certain things you can ask where you're just counting things. Yes, you can know perfectly. There's certain crystals where we know exactly where all the atoms are, where all the atoms are, and we can count them. We know exactly how many atoms there are in a crystal. Certain crystals, yes. 
There's certain answers that are precise, but if it involves a measurement, no, you can, it can be ever more refined, but there could be a point where more refinement just doesn't matter to the aspect of the answer that you're seeking. So in science, we are perfectly content when multiple experiments agree, even if the philosopher isn't, even if the philosopher is distracted by the possibility that there might be a deeper truth lurking within the data that we have accumulated. I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem. Yeah, I guess we can hit a point where we know as much as we want to or need to. And when we hit the end like that, we move on to something else. Science is a continuous journey through the maze of nature. And, but not all information is equally uncertain. That's my only point here. And so we know how to fly. We know how wheels work and all the other machines in physics. We know how electricity works. We, this is why I, we can use a phone. I got an old fashioned phone here. Uh, that's why this works. To say we can't really know, we do know. That's why, that's why you're living longer. That's why so many things are different about your life today than how your ancestors lived. Because the methods and tools of science have been applied to questions that curious people have asked for, for the most part, for the betterment of society and for civilization itself. So no, I'm not gonna wallow in some prospect that we can never know anything. No, we do. And if you want to think that way, just move back to the cave, because that's really where you belong. Yeah, I like uh, indoor plumbing. Hey, Neil, uh, while I've got you, there's a question that's been killing me for years. It's very, very important. You got a question after all that? Okay, what is it? Okay, ready? Is a hot dog a sandwich? I have vowed many years ago to never get into an argument with someone on the definition of a word. All kinds of people love doing this. I, I remember growing up, is it a gum or is it a candy? Is it light or is it less filling? Is it, <laughs> I'm saying, no, I'm not going there because ideas matter to me more than the words we come up with to describe them. Okay, but I need to know, we need to categorize this. But just because your brain is is, is not yours, but all of our collective brains want to categorize things. And if something spills out of one category, we fight about where it belongs. I'm saying, no, I'm not having that fight. I'm not having that fight. In fact, if you want to go there, just invent a new category. Call it the hot dog category. <laughs> okay, it's not a sandwich, it's a hot dog. Yeah, I, I'd be happy with that. Otherwise, no, I'm not spending time arguing this. Please, Neil. Please. Is it a non-bread food sitting between two surfaces of bread? It's a sandwich. Duh. Bye. Ha ha! There you have it. So, well, this wasn't even plugged into anything. Anyway, the Gettier problem exists, and knowledge is a lot more complicated than it seems. Excuse me, Sheriff Cat. Happy trails! Sometimes knowledge is straightforward and irrefutable. Sometimes it's murky. Sometimes we're right and wrong at the same time. And sometimes we hit the practical limits of our curiosity and shouldn't really bother getting any more granular than that. Like Neil says, at a certain point, it's time to move on until we decide we need to go back. In 1972, W.V. Quine, who I referenced in the What is a Paradox video, wrote an essay specifically dedicated to the limits of knowledge. He opens it by asking, are there things that man can never know? And Roger Shattuck, a writer and literary professor, explored the consequences of understanding 24 years later in his book, Forbidden Knowledge including starting off the entire thing with a seminal question to the human experience. Are there things we should not know? And what about Gettier, who inspired a revolution in how we think about thought? Philosopher John L. Pollock concluded that 
Gettier single-handedly changed the course of epistemology. Gettier's 92 years old now. He never published another thing after that paper. Not a word. When asked why, all he said was, I have nothing more to say. Apparently, he also invented the mic drop. It's been another 24 years since Shattuck's book, and my answer to all the questions asked by Shattuck, Quine, Gettier, and Plato is, I don't know. And yeah, social media is nuts, but the other day I was reading a thread by Simon Dedeo. He's a professor at Carnegie Mellon and runs the Laboratory for Social Minds at the Santa Fe Institute. He was talking about knowledge and justified true belief. And he said one reason he likes doing science with others is because they can help him disprove something he believes more efficiently than he can himself. He said that works best because we need help in exploring the unknown. If you're walking in the woods, you can either walk towards a landmark or away. Walking away, for some reason, seems to work better. That's what we're doing all the time. We're identifying the known and exploring the unknown. We struggle with imperfect knowledge. And whether it's science, philosophy, cats, or hot dogs, to get to where we're going, sometimes we just need to walk away. And as always, thanks for watching. So Sheriff Cat, do you arrest like humans or do you just arrest other cats? Do you arrest dogs? Like, how does this work? Hold on. Hello? Hey, you can watch more of Neil and I discussing the boundaries of knowledge and science over on Star Talk. And make sure you subscribe to Star Talk while you're there. It is wonderful. Also, the Summer Curiosity Box has dropped and you can start thinking now by getting yours at curiositybox.com. It's made by Vsauce, and this is the subscription for thinkers. So, basically, you. Bye.